uh, for, for Oregon, uh, from what everyone was saying. We also have uh, other news. We're going to cover this hour. I want to talk about a West Point professor who called for the U.S. military to target legal critics of the war on terror. People who criticized our foreign policy, for example. We're going to talk about what's behind that. We've got a retired CIA agent saying that uh, we run the Afghan opium trade. He actually wrote a book about it. And he claims that as he was about to publish this book, he was set up uh, with child pornography charges. So we're going to talk about that. We have spy chief James Clapper says the intelligence community is like Spider-Man. Well, they do wear a mask. The mask is national security. And they feel that as long as they've got that mask on, they can do anything they want. But we actually did uh, mention, you know, with great power comes great responsibility. But we haven't seen that. What he was really focusing on, however was Spidey's senses, you know, the Spidey sense, a precognition. James Clapper, the guy who lied to Senator Ron Wyden about dragnet surveillance just a couple of weeks before Ed Snowden did the massive uh, release of information that proved that that was what was happening. Of course, many people like Thomas Drake and William Benny and other NSA whistleblowers had uh, right after September 11th, had gone through channels trying to stop this. They knew it was unconstitutional. And we're going to talk about this in detail uh, when we come back. But at the time, they had ignored the NSA whistleblowers, even though they had charged Thomas Drake and tried to put him in jail as a uh, whistleblower. That had not picked up any traction in the mainstream press. But the Ed Snowden Documents, of course, dead. And just before that happened, we have the uh, direct questioning from Ron Wyden, who also knew, everybody knew, that this was going on in the Senate. All the senators and the uh, Intelligence Committee knew it. Their staffers knew it. James Clapper knew it. And he asked him a direct question, said, are you doing dragnet surveillance on the American people? You remember that? He looks down and he, he rubs his head and he goes, well, uh, you know, he, he lied about it. Directly lied about it. He is someone who very much knows about pre-crime. He's been working with geospatial intelligence since 2000. That was his first directorship. That's what we've talked about, being behind Jade Helm. We're going to talk about that when we come back. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Welcome back to the Alex Jones Show. I'm David Knight, your host today. We were talking in the last uh, segment about James Clapper, the guy who famously lied to Ron Wyden about dragnet surveillance just before he was proven to be a liar by the Edward Snowden releases. He's talking about how the intelligence community is kind of like Spider-Man. He does say with great power comes great responsibility, but of course they don't live up to that responsibility. He was really more focused on what he called the precognitive spidey sense. In other words, pre-crime, folks. This is where this is all coming from. James Clapper has been part of geospatial intelligence since, the, since 2000. That was his first directorship. The Geospatial uh, Intelligence Conference that happens every year. It's one of the fastest growing uh, divisions of intelligence. He has been a keynote speaker most of the year. So he is intricately involved in this. And when he talks about a precognition, that's what he's talking about. He's talking about pre-crime. As we've pointed out when we covered Jade Helm, talked about, and of course, Jade Helm is supposed to end tomorrow is the last day of Jade Helm. We've not seen anything uh, overtly on the streets about Jade Helm. Isn't that interesting? Is that surprising? Not really. They said they were going to be dressed as civilians and they were going to try to move around without being detected in America. So these are American soldiers dressed in civilian clothing saying they were going to be moving around without being detected. Now, that's kind of setting the bar pretty low, as, uh, as, as Paul Joseph Watson and I were talking about that when that was first released. So that, well, you know, if they're going to actually use this to uh, train for foreign conflicts, as they always say that that's what they're using it for, instead of using it to operate here domestically against American citizens, they say, no, 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 this isn't for you. This is for other countries where we're going to go to. Well, if they're going to do that, wouldn't you think that uh, that really isn't going to help them with their training? I mean, that right there tells you that they're training for America. But we haven't seen any major helicopter drops or anything else like that. But we pointed out 
that the slogan of Jade Helm was mastering the human domain. We did a very long report on it. I talked with uh, Rob Dew, and, and we broke that down. We looked at the uh, geospatial intelligence conferences where they had a keynote speech that was mastering the human domain. How would they master the human domain? They would do it by predicting what you were going to do. And, of course, we're told by James Clapper, by Hayden, by others that, don't worry, we're not really listening and recording all of your conversations. I, I believe that's a lie. I believe that's what they've got the Bluffdale, uh, Utah data center for. But nevertheless, they say, we're just looking at your metadata. Let me tell you something. James Clapper and the geospatial intelligence community and the special forces community knows that your metadata is even more valuable than your conversation. They call it activity-based intelligence. They call it human domain analytics. If they follow you, if they monitor what everyone is doing, they're, who they're associating with, what religious political groups they're affiliated with, what their movement, uh, their patterns of movement are, if they record all of that, they put that into their database, just like they do for law enforcement, and they see who pops up. Who pops up out of their uh, collection of database? They just run all this through. They say, we're not doing this deductively like Sherlock Holmes would do when he comes in and tries to solve a crime. We're not looking to say, well, there's a crime that's been committed. We want to, let's see who, is, who had motive, who had uh, opportunity. They're not doing that. They're doing this in a pre-crime mode. And that's what the intelligence community put this together with. They want to just collect all your information and see who pops up as being unusual. Then they will focus on you. Do you understand how different, how, how dangerous pre-crime and pre-cognitive intelligence is? Do you understand the potential for false alarms, for people to be singled out when they haven't done anything wrong. And of course, that's the very definition of pre-crime. You haven't committed a crime, but they think you might commit a crime. So they're going to come after you. Now, as they point out in this article from Mint Press, when they talk about his uh, spidey senses, uh, they say, and of course, this is something that's gone on for a long time. We've known, going all the way back to the church and Pike committee hearings in the 1970s, we knew that the government was monitoring the citizens here in America. That was a key part of it. Senator Frank Church warned in 1975, they say, that this surveillance had vast capabilities, that the NSA had vast capabilities. If it turned on Americans, it would mean that no American had any privacy left. The agency could monitor everything from phone conversations to telegrams. And he said, there would be no place to hide. Total information awareness. That is the point of this surveillance that we see now coming from them. And of course... The Pike Committee hearing uh, that was chaired by Congressman Pike, that was the first time the public ever even learned of the NSA. He called the director to testify, and he said, we want to see your charter. You know, even the CIA had a charter. The CIA was uh, created uh, with a charter, not necessarily with a law. But, of course, the NSA was created by an executive order. There we are, back to the president as a dictator, except that was President Truman. Going back to that point, he created them with an executive order and the director of the NSA refused to show that executive order to Congressman Pike. And Congressman Pike was outraged. He said, we give you billions of dollars and we cannot even see the executive order that created you. I said, That's right. I'm not going to show it to you. That's the arrogance of this secret dark government that has set itself against the American people, that has set itself against the rule of law. As I pointed out in this article, and, and we interviewed uh, Thomas Drake, I hope to uh, talk to him again sometime. And as a whistleblower, Thomas Drake had concerns about domestic surveillance in 2001. Immediately after September 11th attacks, he went to Vito Potenza, the NSA Deputy General Counsel. In other words, these whistleblowers, Drake, Benny, Weirby, others, they went through internal channels as they should have done, and they were totally ignored. This is what Potenza said on PBS's Frontline program about this. The, the program was called The Program. Potenza, the general counsel of the NSA, said, the minute 
that Thomas Drake, uh, Drake uh, if he did say, you're using this to violate the Constitution, he says, I mean, I probably would have stopped the conversation at that point, quite frankly. So, I mean, if that's what he said, he said, then anything after that, I probably wasn't listening to anyway. Oh, okay. So you got somebody like Thomas Drake who puts his life on the line like the founders of this country. He put his life, his honor, his uh, livelihood, everything, his career on the line because of his loyalty to his oath to the Constitution. When he was on our program, he said, I didn't take an oath to the presidency. I didn't take an oath to a, a bureaucracy. I took an oath to the Constitution. So he goes to the legal counsel for the NSA and says, what we're doing is unconstitutional. And this guy has the audacity to go on PBS's frontline documentary and say, well, the minute that Thomas Drake comes up and says, uh, what you're doing is against the Constitution, he says, if he said that, I don't know if he said it, I could care less. Uh, if he said that, I, I wouldn't have listened to anything he had to say after that at all. Because, you know, Constitution just doesn't matter anymore, does it? And that's quite frankly, that's where we are. Whether we're talking about treaties, as we did in the last hour, or whether we're talking about the activities of the uh, NSA, they could care less what the Constitution says. I've played the clip from Michael Hayden, where he went to Washington and Lee University, addressed students there in the legal department. And he was talking about what happened. He says, I don't need Section 215. Section 215 is the part of the NSA, a part of the uh, Patriot Act that the NSA says gives them authority to listen to uh, our conversations and, and to uh, spy domestically. He said, I didn't need 215. 215 is such a safe harbor. I, I had an order from the president. And he was so smug and con cocky when he said that. We should play that clip. I, I didn't have that prepared for the guys. But it's just amazing to look at how smug and cough, cocky he was. I had an order from the president. So when you operate like that, the word is called dictatorship. And that's where these guys are. Take a look at this article. This is from World News Daily Report. A retired CIA agent says, we run the Afghan opium trade. Where have we heard that before? We've been telling you that for years at Infowars. We had uh, Geraldo Rivera standing in the poppy field, showing American soldiers, help guarding the poppy fields, helping to load the poppy stuff and say, yeah, yeah, we want to, they need an economy. So we're, we're doing this to help this. I mean, it's absolutely amazing. It's an open secret. But he writes a book about it. A retired CIA agent recently convicted of possession of child pornography accuses the U.S. government of trying to frame him as he was about to release a book that will, he says, blow the lid off the CIA's drug smuggling operations in Afghanistan. This is from the Cheyenne Herald in Wyoming. John F. Abbotsford, a 38-year-old Afghan war veteran that also served his country as a CIA analyst, has recently been convicted of possession of child pornography, accusations that he claims were fabricated by the U.S. government to stop the publication of his upcoming book, The CIA in Afghanistan, 30 Years of Drug Smuggling. He says, this is a desperate attempt by the U.S. government to shut me up. If I'm going to face jail time, I want the truth to be known before they get rid of me in prison. He says, I'm ashamed to say that I've participated in these drug smuggling operations on many occasions. For a long time, I tried to convince myself that we were doing it for the right cause. But this burden is destroying me inside, and I can't stand it anymore. Uh, he said that to a court audience. He said the CIA has been dealing drugs since its creation. And he's addressing the court here because... When they brought him up on charges for child pornography, and understand, with the NSA having the tools to everybody's computers, it's, they're loading stuff on your computer all the time, folks. It may not be child pornography. It may just be stuff to uh, spy on you. But they can very easily put child pornography on anybody's computer if they want to take you down for political purposes. He didn't even address the child pornography charges. When he got up and addressed the court, what he talked about was what they were doing in Afghanistan, what he had been doing. He says the CIA has been dealing drugs since its creation. They've been smuggling drugs everywhere in the world for the past 60 years. In Taiwan in 1949 to support General Chiang Kai-shek against the Chinese communists. In Vietnam and Nicaragua, it's just the tip of the iceberg. And we've been telling you that at InfoWars, Alex news. Jones has been telling you for a long time. We'll be right disasters. back. And of course, yeah, every move you make, they will be watching you. That's the whole point of mastering the human domain. It's total information awareness. It's predicting what you're going to do. And metadata is a key part of it. It's far more important even than getting your phone conversations 
We're going to go back and we're going to take a look at what's going on with the military and their deadly gain of function uh, viruses, their select agents, as they call them, bringing in deadly bacteria that are not.